Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, June 11, 2024. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on that docket today? Much of the same routine as we discussed last night, where quote unquote, these are air quotes, waiting on the phony PPI data, the phony CPI data, the phony FOMC interest rate manipulation announcement, all that stuff happens this week. None of it happened yet. It begins on Wednesday morning. So as such, the market's still relatively quiet, little bit of down, little bit of up, going sideways, eating time off the clock, trading around, hugging, closing back above, or continuing to close above the all-important trend line. She's bullish. We had another new high today. Just a matter of numbers. The high formally was 536.89. Today's high is 537.01. She's on a melt-up grinding operation. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with the CPI. And we don't know how the market's going to react to the FOMC announcement at 2 p.m. And then Jerry's presser following the announcement tomorrow afternoon as well. At present, what we would say from a chart perspective is this. She's bullish above all the moving averages. Above the trend line, she's extra bullish or uber bullish. And therefore, we expect more upside to come unless we get a sign and or signal of a reversal. Where do you find those? First, you find those in the course Lazy E-Mini Trader. There's a whole host of them. For example, let's say you get a big tail candle on high volume, market finishes somewhat near the lows. That could be a reversal signal. We don't have that. We could get that tomorrow. We may not get that. The market may shoot up after the Fed. We have no idea. So we're not in the business of guessing what's going to happen before the Fed, before an earnings announcement, before some other news event. We wait for the event to take place and see if there's an opportunity based on the reaction because of the event. That's my way, my process. I find that's what works for me and my traders. If she's going to rally after the Fed, for example, or even after the CPI for that matter, I would say they wouldn't get too far after the CPI and before the FOMC announcement. But let's just say they rally at any point. Where are they going? Well, they're at new highs. So could they go up 35, 55, 75, 100 handles in the S&P or 100 handles in the ES, sure they can. We don't know what's going to happen. So therefore, we just sit back and let it happen. But what about from an intraday perspective, for example, like today? What's that blue line on the screen? It's the same one from last night, 533.07. What happened today? Look at today's candle. Can't see it very well. Let's go down to a 15-minute chart. What'd they do? They came back one more time to run a test of that important spot. They spiked it a little bit ripped it back up in the other direction. What is that important spot as a refresher? That's the breakdown candle high. That's our bogey. The high of that candle is 533.07. Recapturing that on the downside, especially after testing it three or four times, recapturing it and staying below is the bear case. I would write that down, put it on a sticky note if it's not already there. By the way, do we have any tinfoil hat events on the docket coming up? Well, as far as I'm concerned, we don't really have any this week, but we do have one next week. What is it? It's the summer solstice, and it happens on the 20th of June after the market close. What is it? It's the longest day of the year. Basically, that's what the summer solstice is. It's the official start of the astronomical summer, and the longest day of the year. The only reason why we bring these things up is because from experience, and you don't have to take my word for it, go back in history and look at these kind of dates and then go look on the chart around those dates. And you'll see that many times, not every time, but 
several times, many times, the market will trade up or down into one of these events and it will have a turn. Doesn't have to be a long term monthly turn for several months. It could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, but the market has a tendency to trade up or down into those events. So, for example, down or up into next Thursday, Friday area and have some kind of a turn situation. Write it down, put it on a sticky note. What happened inside the numbers today? Any revelations? Yeah, we had some trades today. We had plenty of trades in the live room. We had trade opportunities inside the numbers. You could say it was a bit of a bonanza today across the board. And I say the word bonanza because it was a rather slow tape. And to get a bucket full of trades in a slower tape is a bonanza. It's a bonanza from a relative perspective. Zero Dark 30 notes. We're starting to talk about the FOMC two-day meeting beginning today, culminating tomorrow. We start with today's pivot, which is also a chip shot away from the trend line. That was early resistance, 534.50. The trend line was maybe 10 or 15 cents higher. And then we had some stuff down below. Let's see where we are as the day gets underway. We had an early bounce back in the other direction area. 533.60 down to a spike of 533. Five minute chart right of the vertical is today's activity. Market opens below, gaps down below the trend line. Here's 533.60. They came in and spiked even to 533.07. We were in a trade, in a long trade. We held the line. I knew where the next number was. They never actually got to the next number. We had in real time, and this was the discussion with the traders in the live room, in real time, we had what's called waning velocity, which means we're looking for a turn. So the market spiked the 533 just as it did a couple of days before, yesterday, the day before, and then she bounced back in the other direction. We were able to maneuver ourselves from an, uh-oh, is this trade wrong, to a, hey, nice profit on the trade. Turned it into a stand-up double, turned it into a Whopper Jr., held a piece all day, turned it into a Grand Salami. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. It's all in here. Everything that was discussed just now, highlighted. Everything you need to know during the trading session in the morning, before the market opens. We have what's called a pre-market schematic each and every day. I give the layout Right around 9 o'clock, 8.45, 9, 10, somewhere in there, I get a handle on what she's doing. Here's the upside. Here's the downside. Here's the trade we're looking for. Here are the targets. Here is where she's wrong. All that stuff is provided to my traders each and every day inside the numbers and in the live room. What about stocks on the move today? We had three possibilities. Two did not hit their entry objectives. They're off the board. FCX and Fro, not bro, but Fro. But Coin did hit its entry objective, so let's take a look at that chart. There's a five-minute chart of Coin getting a buzz cut at the opening bell. Came into the support zone. 236.85 was my first number. They did bounce it a little bit there. Gave a scalp for those traders that wanted to take it off. Continued down hit the second number, and then absolutely ripped it back up in the other direction, making a high over here over 243. If you think about painting by the numbers, your average cost is about 235 and change. They went up over eight bucks from the average entry in a matter of minutes, all things considered. A lot of money made today in the live room, a lot of participation in coin. Real-time situation for CleanSpark in the live trading room today. Stock was getting hit at the open. Traders brought it up in the live room. Say, hey, do we have a support price in CleanSpark? 1435 down a dime to 1425 was a small zone for a bounce back in the other direction. Obviously, you can see the result. That was, once again, low of day. Funny how that works. Traders had a nice rip in CleanSpark. I told you, it was a bit of a bonanza today. This is another live room trade we had participation in. Autodesk, 206.88, the bounce, the rip, the trade. Pretty cut and dry. Getting a haircut, picked out a number, went the other way. Nice trade. 
How about wheat futures? This was our zone in wheat futures. 620, 605. You could see what happened. Go down to an hourly chart. Missed the bottom number by a tick or two. This was the zone. We had participation in wheat futures over the last couple of days. These are real-time discussions that we're having in the live trading room. What can we trade? We don't care whether it's a commodity, a stock, the index. Doesn't make any difference under the sun. All charts act and react the same way. Where have you heard that before? About GM. Gave this out to the live trading room yesterday. 4860. Got there today. Was overhead resistance. Did we have some traders that took a scalp there? Of course we did. Another live trading room situation. There was today's zone in Tesla. 168.75 down about a buck and a half to 167.20. They got almost to the bottom number, ripped it back up in the other direction, provided the deal from a trading perspective. An intraday scalp with potential. It's a day trade. What are you looking for on Tesla? Buck and a half, two bucks. You're happy with that? They gave it to you. You get any more and we call it a cherry on top, gravy, anything like that. It's also called a risk-free, emotionless trade. There was a few more in the live room today, but we'll move on. I think you got the point. It was a bit of a bonanza. So we've got the S&P making new highs, and we have the IWM down a buck and a quarter today. Relative weakness. Should we read into this in front of the CPI, PPI, data shuffle, and the Fed? Probably not. Let's just wait for all that stuff to pass and see where things take us. IWM, transports, S&P, and other indexes. Taking it at face value, it's a different chart than the S&P. Below moving averages, trend is your friend. She's not below all of them on the daily, but she's below three out of four of them on the daily. So we'll just take that and say, until or unless she can recapture at least 204, 205 area, this is still in the bearish camp. Remember we looked at the weekly chart from yesterday? Really want them to recapture that weekly chart 20 period moving average to be above all the moving averages where the trend is your friend. What you do have in the IWM right now is a series of higher lows. So you have a low, you have a higher low here, a higher low here, and then all of a sudden you may have a higher low if this sticks even if it comes down a little more, as long as they continue to put in higher lows, they won't break the chain. But if they start not putting in higher lows and putting in a lower low, that breaks the chain of the higher lows. From a garden variety Fibonacci retracement perspective, and this is not to the penny, this is about, and so therefore you've done about a 618 retrace to about 198 and change on this move down from low too high. The retracement was about 61.8%, which is a Fibonacci retracement number of the move. No wonder you got to bounce. Funny how that works. Again, another one of those components in my course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. There's no secrets with Fibonacci retracements, but there is a technique on how you use them, which most people tend to use them incorrectly. Funny how that works too. What a shocker. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Those lines come from the weekly chart. Theoretically, she can go back and forth until these two points meet, at which time will be up. What does that mean? And this is weeks away, whenever that does happen, if it does happen. What it means is if they're breaking up, they're going to continue breaking out. If they're breaking down, they will continue to break down out of this triangle type pattern. It's not exactly a triangle. It's close enough. We're not going to split hairs over an isosceles triangle. Daily chart, below all the moving averages, trend is your friend, relative weakness today, second favorite market leading indicator next to Camp IWM, my favorite canary in the coal mine down just under 1% today. So we have IWM and transports down. We have S&P up. We have Q's up, which we'll look at in a few minutes. And then we also have some other stuff that we'll get to in a couple of moments. We have what's called a potpourri of stuff today. We're going to take it at face value. My second favorite market leading indicator, a number one canary, down almost 1% today. 
We're not going to obviously take it as a positive. We're going to say there is, again, and only, I think, one day over the last several days, there's been a lack of a divergence or a divergence in the other way. But here we have what's called a negative divergence between the transports, the IWM, negatively diverging from what the S&P is doing. S&P making new highs, transports and IWM not even close. They're going the other way. We've got what's called a negative divergence. One day here, one day there, they snap back. That's fine. But overall, you have the makings of negative divergence. And what we do know is it will clear up. And maybe this week is an elixir for it to clear up, a recipe. Either the transports and the IWM are going to snap back and follow suit against the S&P, or the S&P is actually going to turn around, and this will have turned out to be the hint signal canary in the coal mine. How do you like them apples? What about the Q people breaking out to new highs still? Nothing wrong with this tape. We're not sure where they're going, whether it's 470, 475. Again, it's going to get whippy tomorrow and even on Thursday. So we'll just let it play out. They're at new highs. They're melting up. Let it happen. We're looking for a sign and or signal of a trend change to determine a, something to trade against if we believe there's a high in place, which will also give us some kind of a semblance of targets on the downside. We have nothing of the sort, so we just let them go until they show us something on the chart that we can sink our teeth into. Guessing where the top is isn't necessarily what we're doing. There'll be another pullback. It's just a question of from exactly where. Here's another hint slash canary slash trouble under the covers with the market, with the financials. So the financials aren't following suit with the S&P. They were down over 1% today, almost 50 cents in the XLF. So you could see we were talking about this, riding these moving averages. Was this a bearish pattern in the making? We talked about it yesterday, a couple other times. And you go over to the weekly chart and you could say, hey, look, if they're going to give up the 20 week moving average, on close by Friday, then something else is developing here that we need to be aware of. The other markets are likely going to follow suit. Look, the transports, financials, and small caps for that matter aren't all going to be going in one direction while the Qs and the S&P and the Dow are going to be headed higher. It's not going to work that way for very long. These divergences will, and I repeat, will resolve themselves. Write that number down in the XLF. If they're going to spike the 100 period moving average, 40.36 is a number below the 100 period moving average of interest, at least from an intraday perspective. If reached sooner than later, should get some kind of an intraday reaction. Write that down, put it on a sticky note. If you're an interested intraday participant, what happened with Smash Mouth today? Nothing down 38 cents. We're not going to read into that. She's at new highs on the charts, not new highs from yesterday. Just overall new highs on the chart in an uptrend where the trend is, in fact, your friend. We're not going to read into down 38 cents. No real change from yesterday. No material change. It's a rounding error. She's eating time off the clock in this upper range that she reached about four or five days ago. What does that mean? Well, generally speaking, that means she's building energy to move higher once again. When do we know that's not happening? Below 250.85. That's the most recent breakout area. Get back below 250.85. Something different than the bull case is developing, at least in the short term. Write that down. Put it on a sticky note. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos, they're not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.